Now then, here we are for the first time in a few days back on F1 Manager and we are officially at the halfway stage. Today we have the Austrian Grand Prix in this episode. Now if you haven't seen the previous one, the British Grand Prix at Silverstone, our home Grand Prix, go check it out guys, link in the top right. As always, if you're going to enjoy this one, leave a like and subscribe, it really helps the channel out. And yeah, let's get into it and let's see if we can try and get back into the points in today's episode. So heading into this weekend, we have an 80% safety car chance. No rain forecast, unlike the last race in Silverstone. We'll do performance targets in a moment. First of all, though, let's talk about upgrades. Now, as you can see, we have the underfloor and the side pods on the way over the next month or so. Now, during the last race weekend at Silverstone, we had the front wing design arrive midway through the weekend on Saturday. And I went ahead and also manufactured the new front wing. So we now have that on the car for this weekend's race. Now, in today's episode, we're going to do something a little bit different. Now, historically, I've always kind of done the baseline guarantees, but this time we're going to make an adjustment. So for this race weekend, we're going to activate a qualifying position streak. For the next five races, we have to get P15 or above with both cars, not just the one. That will bring in a lot more cash and hopefully help us out. To go with that, we're also going to guarantee Q2 with both cars, which will also bring in a decent bit of cash flow. And for this weekend, we are not going to guarantee a fast lap in the race, as I'm not too sure if we'll achieve it. So, yeah, a bit more ambitious on these. I want to try and see if I can get a bit more cash flow and start to really push forward. Well done, guys. Very good. Copy. Copy. Right, so good start then. FP2 already maxed out the setup on Alonso's car. Sebastian is on 91, so we should hopefully get 100 in FP3 with him. Okay, there we go. 99%. Not quite 100, but we'll take that. That's fine. So 100 Alonso, 99 Seb, and maximum track acclimatization. And car part knowledge also pretty high. So just to recap, practice has finished. Hamilton with a penalty for the race. Further down, Alonso P14, less than a second off the pace, Seb P17, everyone on soft tyres, but we're now going to put on the fresher engine components, which will help us out. After practice, you can see we have maximum score on performance bonus, which is what we want, so everything looking very good here heading into qualifying. Now, one thing I'll mention before going into qualifying is that we have gone ahead and actually drafted up and moved engine number three into the car for this one, as it is a power circuit. So both cars will have a brand new engine, there's only two ERS units for the entire season, so we're still running the second one. But crucially, they'll have a fresh engine, so some extra power for this one, which I think is going to be a really, really key factor in this race. So yeah, we'll then go back to the engine number two for the next few races, essentially not going back to this engine until Spa Monza probably. So making a one-off uh, to try and hopefully have better performance in this power circuit. So yeah, let's see if it works out. So qualifying underway, Ocon just ahead of Alonso, both on laps, so Alonso won't get held. Sebastian is going to encounter Bottas, who won't be an issue as he clears him down the back straight. And also clears Stroll just in time. So first lap's in, and it's a pretty close top four. Let's see what the second lap has to say. So lap number two, Alonso up in both sectors one and two. So he actually improves by a tenth, moves into the top three. Sebastian Vettel, let's see, also a couple of personal bests, improves to P4 just behind Alonso. So that engine working well as we are at the top of the midfield right now ahead of our control, Joe and Bottas. Now, interestingly, with 3.40 to go, I think we're safe. I don't think we have to go back out. Both Haas and both Williams will get knocked out, I think. I mean, Magnussen will improve, but I still think he might get knocked out. Um... Hamilton seems off the pace, Bottas, Joe, I mean, they're going to have to find three tenths, it's a lot of time to find. I'm willing to take a chance here and try to save a set of tyres and not go back out and see if it works out. Yellow flag, sector one, checkered flag about to drop. Verstappen making a mistake, but he's ahead of us. Let's see, so first up in, Kevin Magnussen across the line, P12 behind Sebastian, that's all we need. I am think we're safe now with that, that will do just fine. Albon doesn't improve. Stroll, does he improve? No. Okay, it just gets ahead of us. So, uh, Alpha Tyre looking pretty strong. Ocon next to cross the line. Let's see what Ocon does. This will give us a pretty good indication. Ocon does not improve. So, there we go. That's it. We're safe. That's it. Lovely. We haven't got to worry now. Hamilton also doesn't improve. Ricardo also does not improve. And there we go. Q1 done. So, job done. Comfortably. Both cars in the top 10. Love to see it. And hopefully with more pace to find and improve upon because 
you know, we're going to go for them single flying lap runs now. I think we're in the mix of P6, looking at these lap times. Uh, so yeah, about for P6, and we're going to have both cars in the fight for this one, which is exciting. Now then, for this first Q2 run, I'm actually going out on that same soft tyre we used. Essentially, we're going to go for a used soft tyre run, and then a new soft tyre run. Essentially, what that will mean is, if we do get into Q2 with both cars, we'll actually save a set of softs for the race, uh, which is really exciting. So... Let's see, first lap on the board. We're gonna speed this up a little bit. Alonso will just about not hit traffic. One minute, 4.7. That's more or less in the ballpark of what we did before. They're both on a single flyer. So yeah, Seb not too far behind. First flyer in the bag. Let's see what the others do. Okay then, here we go. Let's ride on board for the action then. We're gonna go with Seb as he's more likely to get knocked out. Right now sitting in P11, Alonso still in the top 10. Magnussen has finished his lap and is P12, so he stays behind us, which is a very good first sign. Personal best for both drivers in the first sector as the checkered flag drops. Ocon does not improve, which is good. Let's see what sector two has to say. I don't think Seb's getting dirty air from Alonso. I think he's just enough, further enough back to not be in trouble. Norris also out. Both drivers on personal bests. Let's see. Albon now and Stroll move to the top 10. Both Alpines in as well, so that pushes us out. We need to improve it. Alonso, does he get in? Yes, he does. Sebastian also does. Double Q3. Love it. Now, for the first time this season, we have both cars in Q3, and that is very, very exciting. Both cars improved. Sebastian, only five one thousandths off Alonso, so very good pace from Sebastian Vettel. Realistically, Gasly Albon found another gear. I don't think we have this sort of pace, so we could well be looking at a P9, P10 for Q3. But still, we have two fresh sets of soft tyres, so let's use them. So never mind, maybe not two fresh sets of softs, but we're going to have that set we just used, which is very, very slightly worn. And that way we'll save a set of soft to the race if necessary. Tire wear is pretty low, so the soft tire will be a good tire for the race and it will be used. So I want to try and keep a set for that reason. Let's not waste too much time then. So first lap in Q3 and Sebastian has made a mistake. This was the Aston Martin. Okay, luckily I think that's just before Seb started his lap. So I think he'll get away with that. Either way, Alonso is going to hit Albon and Perez right through this middle sector. Especially Albon there. He'll clear them both, I believe. Yes, he will, just. Seb's made another error. This one is a big one. So this was the Aston Martin. It's a lockup. And... Seb was never making that. So a bit of a shame. We threw away the first lap with Sebastian Vettel, but yeah, Alonso also a pretty poor first a banker lap. Okay, then here we go. Final runs in qualifying. Let's see what Fernando can do. We're going to watch him for this one and see if... We can get a little bit of magic from the man himself. Anything other than P9, P10 would be a result, I think, based off the pace. So, let's see. Sector 1 should be green for both drivers. No, Alonso actually does not improve in the first sector. That's a bit of a surprise. Seb does improve, and obviously Seb will now improve for the rest of the sectors. Unless he makes another mistake. But let's see. Alonso, second sector. We'll get an update now. Personal best indeed. Checkered flag drops. Hmm. Let's see, let's see. Gasly does not improve. What about Albon? I think he's finished his lap. Yes, he has. So this is it. Alonso up to the line. What is it going to be? P9. And that means Seb will most likely be P10. Up to the line. Let's confirm it. Yep, there we go. Right, qualifying done. So there we have it then. Qualifying done. P9, P10. Can't really complain both drivers went slower in Q3 than Q2, but even then it would have been no difference in terms of where they would have finished. So yeah, work to do in the race. I think we can definitely race Gasly and Albon for P7 in the race. I think that's definitely the objective. Um, if we can get P7, P8, that would be decent points for us. So that's going to be what we're going to try and aim for on Sunday. Now then, for the race, both drivers on the same strategy, soft to hard tyre. I've custom made it as it's slightly quicker than the other options that we have, as you can see. Um, they're all a little bit slower and we set that set of soft tires so I want to try and use it and make the most of it also if there's any safety car at any point we'll have a fresh medium to go on which is really good so that will help us out quite a bit it's bright and sunny as the drivers line up on the grid looking at Fernando Alonso here a top 10 position today but will they be able to capitalise on it and for the second driver it's Sebastian Vettel with a top 10 position on the grid, this race could really go either way for them. 
the teams are ready to go. The crowd are ready, the cars are ready. It's the Austrian Grand Prix. And it's lights out and away we go. Underway then. Also that soft tyre is going to help us keep better pace in the first half of the race. Both our drivers getting to work straight away. And I can see some hard tyre runners actually. Albon, Gasly, Verstappen, Perez, Russell all on hard. So that's interesting. Sebastian Vettel though challenging Alonso right now. No pressure from behind. So we do need to make the soft tyre count. We'll start to get into that in a bit. For now though let's just try and make sure we ideally get into the race. Um, and then on top of that I'd say try and break away from the pack. And lock in that top nine as Sebastian overtakes Fernando Ocon getting dropped and Hamilton down to P19 with that penalty Sebastian though through on Fernando which is interesting but like I'm saying we're gonna try it and just pull away ideally drop Ocon out of the IS range and start to create that disconnect from you know top runners midfield to lower midfield and slower cars and that will really help us out so yeah let's see if we have the pace to do that Ocon one point 0 1.1 starting to drop a little bit and uh, possibly it could be out of DRS range here as DRS has now been enabled. Looking at the Delta that looks like he has just held on but he's still very close to getting dropped so a bit more here from our boys and we won't be able to drop them. Further back though Magnussen dropping, Alfa Romeo's dropping, McLarens have got no pace so this is a good race for us to try and get some points on the McLarens. Seb Alonso still hanging in there quite easily. So right now the Ferraris are absolutely dominating up front. Sainz, Leclerc constantly swapping places. Russell has managed to break a gap to Perez, who is at the front of this train. Verstappen, Gasly, Albon in it. Sebastian, Alonso, Ocon, Stroll at the back of it. Currently Alonso in tar saving mode, as he's probably going to go a lap longer than Seb in terms of strategy. So we're just kind of building up that offset on tyre wear. I did go for a little bit of light mode for a couple of laps just to help save some tyres, and it worked out. Then we started to drop back a bit, so... I set them both to start pushing again. And right now Alonso is just flirting with dropping out of the ice range here. So just going to keep an eye on things. Sebastian also could be about to drop. But we're going to trust the process here and stick the course. Also saving a lot of fuel. But we've had a huge crash. And that's an Alpine. That's Gasly. Oh my good God. Safety car. Let's have a look. Right then. So into the final corner. Oh my God. We didn't even get a proper view of it. But somehow, Alonso has been penalised in the process. Okay, this might give us the answers we need. So, Stroll behind Gasly. Gasly runs off the track and just rejoins into Alonso. So, wait a minute. Alonso has damage. Seb seems to be okay, but... Oh, God, that is awful. How has Alonso been penalised in that? That is... A joke. Stroll's the one that got penalised. Um, a very weird incident. Very strange incident. Either way, it's not the end of the world. We can go to the end on the hard tyre. That's going to be the plan. So, because everybody else is starting hards, they can't do that, but we can. So, we can get our stop out of the way and just get the hard tyres on and go to the finish. So, even Alonso, who's got damage, will be able to um, change his tyres. You can see Seb's lost his soft tyres down to 37%. So, Luckily, no car damage. Alonso has terminal front wing damage, which of course we can replace. And then minor damage on chassis and rear wing. So we'll keep an eye on things. Alonso could potentially be in trouble and dare I say we may have to retire the car depending on his pace. Now according to the game, the hard tire does 84 laps. I've got about 60 odd laps to go. It's marginal, but doable. Right then, so Sebastian's going to come in. Luckily, he's got no damage, so he won't have a long stop. And that is better. If Seb was damaged, it would ruin Alonso's race because, you know, Alonso will lose a lot of time in the pit stop. It's still going to be close. It's still going to be marginal. Alonso will take a bit of a hit for time, but it is what it is. Seb underway 2.8. And Alonso goes straight in. No time loss. Serving his penalty, which is good, so he'll get that out of the way. And he should also get a wing change. No? No wing change? No wing change? Or has it happened without us being able to see it? Okay, it's happened without us being able to see it. The animation didn't load, but... Alonso gets a wing change, so happy days. Seb rejoins P13, going to the end of the race. He's the first of the cars who is not stopping again, so that's interesting. So Seb could be in a very unique position here. Alonso a bit further back. Not too bad, only Ocon ahead, so Alonso hasn't actually lost anything. 
So time for the restart then. Here we go. Green flag. We're going to keep an eye on Fernando just to see how bad the damage is affecting his car. The good news is that Gaz is out the race. So if we can get back into the points, Alpine won't score points today um, unless Ocon fights back in, back in. So he's on the same strat as us. So it's important that we try to race him. Well, let's see. Uh, one by one, one car at a time. But all of our bets are placed on Seb. Hopefully he doesn't make any errors like he did in qualifying because that would pretty much ruin our race. And yeah, we'll just keep an eye on it and just judge it on a lap by lap basis. Uh, Alonso will most likely get overtaken by Joe on that medium tyre behind. And we'll just play the long game. Really, that's all we can do at this stage and hope for the best. Bottas has made a mistake. Let's take a look at the replay. Now we see Valtteri Bottas. Bottas made this mistake right here. And it's a bad one because he's caused a three second time loss to the cars ahead. You can see on the map, it's just completely broken the train already. So. Yeah, Bottas under pressure here, and faster cars behind. And that's going to hinder our boys, and that's, this is going to hinder our strategy, which isn't good. I was banking on just being in the DRS train. So Alonso dropping backwards here, Ocon battling Joe, which means they've actually lost contact with Sebastian Vettel and his DRS. But yeah, right now I've got them in light mode on tyres to try and save tyres, and then I'm also compensating by burning some fuel to lighten the car and also maintain pace. Tar saving is crucial at this stage of the race. We can start to push once everyone pits. Uh oh. Mistake from Sebastian, he's off. Taking a look again, it involves Sebastian Fett. That lockup could have cost them dearly. Battling the TV and he's messed it up. Far from ideal. This race could be a bit of a tricky one now. I'm kind of banking maybe a second safety car and a set of mediums to kind of bail us out. So we have some movement. Signs Hamilton in the pit lane. Signs will be okay, just Hamilton though will feed out into all this traffic right at the back of the queue. On fresh tyres, going to the end, but at the back of the queue regardless. He's on a set of hard tyres going to the end. Seb has caught up, I used a bit of energy deploy to catch up and get the job done. He's now behind Alonso and the train has kind of reformed a little bit. Um, we've got yellow flag, oh my god it's a big one. It's a huge crash in sector 2. Virtual safety car, possibly full safety car by the looks of it. Bottas has sneaked through. So is Magnussen. Now just focus on the hats. So Magnussen. No, Bottas runs it wide. He starts it and there's contact with Magnussen. And that causes the blockage. Red flag. This is really interesting. Let's have a little think and see what we can do. And make some adjustments. Still a long way to go, but I feel like I might try and go for the medium tire. There's 40 laps to go. The medium could do 56. Shouldn't be impossible. I'm going to put both cars on a medium. And it's lights out and away we go. So back underway then with a few penalties. Magnussen with a penalty. Ricardo at the race. P13-14 for us. As Seb yet again gets past Alonso at the race restart. Of course Alonso with damage. So yeah, no surprises there. A lot of fuel in the bank, which is interesting. Everyone's on soft except for us. So... The AI are going to stop again. We're going to try and go to the end. And we're going to see which strategy works out best. That's kind of really it. So we'll see how that works out. Main thing here is trying to keep up with the cars ahead on the faster tyre. Hopefully the medium holds on. We'll go push mode on fuel to guarantee that we have some decent pace. Vettel overtaken by Stroll. No big surprises there. Play. Now look at this. It was the Alpha Tauri driver involved. Yeah, fair move. Can't complain. Just drive through, mate. I mean, why not? Very easy move. <laughs> Mistake from Perez. He drops to last. That's not going to help him. Same mistake as Sebastian. Break away in the train. Albon keeping up with the leaders here. Bottas dropping back. So, uh, yeah. Seb also dropping back. Alonso's got surprisingly decent pace actually so far. Hamilton threw on Seb. That should reform the DRS train and drag Seb. Lovely move around the outside to be fair. That is quality right there. Fair play Lewis. Tempted to use a bit of energy to close the gap to these cars ahead but I think we'll naturally catch up once their soft tyres start to fade. The last thing we want to do is start to push on the tyres. Latifi now goes through on Alonso. Hamilton through on Alonso now. Alonso just getting dropped here. I'm going to set him to deploy to try and keep up with the pace and try and keep the train intact. The longer the train stays intact, the better. And there we go, that has now pretty much reformed it. 
They were all kind of merging back up. What we need now is Albon to start dropping back a little bit here and kind of dragging back into this battle for P5, which would really help us out. Okay, Strong made a mistake. That gives us a place. Lovely stuff. Oh, did someone run wide there? Just going to set Seb to push to catch back up and close the gap, ideally. Tire wear genuinely doesn't look that bad for the soft runners. I'm starting to wonder if they'll go to the end. If they do, I've, I'm currently in tire saving mode, so I'm going to keep saving tires and see if we might get a chance to fight back at the end. Also, I'm trying to not use up all the fuel. Uh, we might have to push it in the race here, so I'm going to try and keep something back for now. If they pit, we'll start to deploy and push Alonso through on Latifi. Let's have a look. Let's have a look here. This was the Aston Martin. Getting the horses out on the back straight with the RS. This race isn't over. Alonso's pace is actually insane. I'm not going to lie. He's been very impressive considering he's got damage. I think had he not had damage, he'd be very, very strong this race. But we're going to go to tire saving mode now. So Latifi is starting to hold up Norris and Seb here. So I'm going to get this ready. We're going to put Seb into overtake mode and also fuel push. We're going to try and get Norris and Latifi both here. There we go. He clears one. Just got to clear Latifi now. And he clears Latifi. And we'll leave him Looks in push. Like have just gained a race position. Leave him in push mode to try and get on to the back of Alonso here, which is very important. Running a little bit low on the battery. So this could be close. Could be marginal, to be fair. I think the AI are genuinely going to try this and get to the end. I mean, the tower was actually looking pretty good for them, to be fair. The soft tires held on well, especially those who had a fresh soft. Although Leclerc does pit. If they start pitting now, I don't know if they're going to recover the gap in 10 laps. Albon pits, which is good. Uh, this could work out quite nicely for us, actually. The AI may have shot themselves in the foot by going and staying out this long. They'll go for another set of softs, you know, but it'll be a short little sprint. But will they make it? Either way, it's going to move us into the points, which is nice. Leclerc will most likely come back through, but Albon's definitely out of contention now. I wonder, maybe those who had a fresh soft won't stop, but those who only had a used one will. I think that's what's going to happen. And we'll get a chance to fight back now at the end here with these slightly better tyres. I'm now kind of pushing with Alonso here and trying to save with Seb a little bit and get ready for the end of the race push. Max Verstappen also pits. Nobody ahead of us though. I think these four will try and go to the end. Alonso very close to the RS range here. Verstappen will rejoin just behind us. And also just behind that little bit of traffic as well. So Leclerc being pinned back right now. This is actually looking pretty good to be fair. I think we can get a podium this race if... It goes our way. So uh, we're going to go into harvest mode here to try and get the batteries charged up. And we can burn the fuel. Magnuson pits as well with that penalty. So that moves us into P6 and P7. What a strange race. Leclerc now has freed himself and is now on the hunt. And George Russell also pits. Not able to make it. That's a bit of a surprise. So Sainz did rejoin ahead of us. So expecting George to be just ahead. Leclerc is absolutely flying. Bottas pits. Okay, interesting. Alonso going for the move here on Joe, which is good because Leclerc is hunting, so we'll clear Joe, though he may well pit anyway. Meanwhile, Russell rejoined behind Ocon. Let's just keep doing what you're doing. Joe peels off into the pits, so this is it. I'm going to go for a bit of a push here with both to try and close in on Ocon. Although I think Ocon may pit. I don't want to take that chance. I want to make sure we uh, stay in the race. And there goes Leclerc. Seb holds on though. Verstappen will now start to gain. May have to use Leclerc to get to Ocon. I'm going to go back into recharge mode with both cars here. Uh, which will allow Leclerc to get by. The plan here is to try and latch onto Leclerc hopefully. And drag us to Ocon which would be ideal. So Leclerc threw up the inside on Seb and we'll follow through here on Fernando not quite yet though Alonso holds on for a bit longer and Seb actually fights it back so Aston Martin here teaming up this is also bringing Verstappen into play which I don't want but I can't you know beggars can't be choosers Seb through on Fernando let's just commit and try and see if we can find some sort of pace here Leclerc looking to go by here both Aston Martins working together here. Seb catching up to Ocon, doing an excellent job of ramping up the pace. At 1.4, so we run out of battery again. We're still holding on. Verstappen has now joined the party, but we're able to defend here. I'm not going to rule this podium out. Both drivers are running on absolute fumes right now. 
Albon's catching. That's the one I don't want. We do not want Albon to outscore us today. We just need to get DRS and Ocon, who's holding on right now. He's elusive. If we can just get into DRS range, it will really help us out. Seb just not quite there as we head on to the last half of the race. Meanwhile, Alonso's holding on, and Verstappen isn't getting by. We're, we're not doing too bad. We're holding on here. I will keep the battery in deploy, even though we've got nothing left, because it kind of recharges in, in at different points and then kind of starts to juice and use. We'll go aggressive on tyres now for what we've got left. So we just need to push now. Copy. This will help. Leclerc will close the gap now and get the DRS on Archon. So this will be our chance to get Archon here. We're going to stick with the action here as this is going to go down to the wire. It's all kicking off here on this last lap. And uh, Seb and Alonso go through on Leclerc. And now we have a chance to potentially get Archon now. This could be perfect. Oh yes, Seb goes through. What about Alonso? Can he get it done? Oh my God. Oh my God. Come on, Fernando. We have low battery. Gotta go, gotta go. Yeah. Yes. Go on, Fernando. Pull off the surprise. Go, go, go. We've got this, we've got this. Come on. Oh, Ocon might just hold on now because of that. Have we got anything left in the tank? Use Come on. If you need it, use energy. Could be a run to the line. Yeah, Seb will get another podium. Alonso fighting off P5. Let's check your flag. Strategy was good. Brilliant. Brilliant. Take all the pick up and away in. Take all the pick up you can, smash it. All the pick up you can. Let's check a flag. We had a good car. So we deserve these double points. Good job everyone. What a beautiful sight that is on the podium, and a true crowning achievement for everyone involved. And the multiple world champion clearly isn't done yet, as once again he triumphs with yet another podium finish. There we see the three drivers with the biggest haul of points. And of course, the silverware to boot. Oh boy, we've done it again. What a race, what a result. That was genuinely, unlike other races where we were much quicker, I don't think our pace was great. And that was a real roller coaster of a race, but the strategy paid off. Um, right tar, the right time, going for the medium on the restart after the red flag was the way to go. And we got a really strong points haul and a massive point score to be fair compared to Alpine and Mercedes at least which are our direct rivals which is really really good so very very happy with this result um shame we couldn't quite make it a 3-4 but you know what it wasn't looking like a 3-4 at one stage I genuinely thought Leclerc and Verstappen were going to get us and they somehow finished behind us so very very happy with that in the drivers championship Alonso stays eighth Seb matches him on points now and moves up to P9 so both drivers in the top 10 you love to see it and with a uh, a fairly equal or literally equal shared haul of points which is exactly what you want from both of your drivers and they're just one point behind Archon so yeah happy days in the constructors we're up to fourth and that is good we overtake Alpine for the first time this season and to be fair the gap to Merck is about 33 points but we're ahead of Alpine and that is a step in the right direction and we've got more upgrades on the way so this is very very promising and to be fair, we were the second highest scoring team after Friday today. So that is a great, great result for us. And I'll take that. Anyway, before we uh, go to wrap up, big points haul for both the boys here today. Love to see it. Point for Alonso. So let's spend it. Finally, cash payouts. As you can see, decent bit of cash flow coming in. We hit our targets of qualifying. So we hit the guarantees. So that will help. So we have some emails to go through, which we'll go ahead and do. So F1 in schools invitation. Now, to be fair, the only downside of this is that the staff experience is paused for seven days. It shouldn't affect the drivers from what I can tell, so I don't mind. I'll agree to attend and it'll give us an extra 100 grand, which isn't a lot of cash, but still money anyways. Uh, Post-race debrief, acceleration of car one could be better. Adaptability of Alonso could be better. 
board is happy, confidence has grown, and confirmation, um, it looks like next season, we've got a, a tiebreaker, which has been voted for. Five against five, and we are going to have double points, I believe, for the final race next season. So, fair enough. Back to 2014, I guess. Back to the future. Now, with that done, we have points to spend. Seb does have one, so we're going to go ahead and invest it. Looking at the options that we have available to us here. I'm going to go for adaptability for him. Uh, so, I want to try and bring everything up and kind of round everything up to around 85. As for Alonso, we're going to also spend his point, And for him, it's going to be one of the racecraft ones to be fair looking at this accuracy as well could be improved um we'll go for yeah we'll go for accuracy actually we'll level that up and that also levels the lonzo up to 88 which is insane does Felipe Drogovic have a point no he does not now we're gonna leave it there guys I'm gonna take care of the rest of developments on stream probably for the next episode if I get around to streaming it so yeah you can see both drivers in the top 10 in the drivers championship which looks really really nice and also p4 now in the constructors what a season by the way what a run of results we've had a bit of a blip in Silverstone, but we're back with the strong results. And we go to Paul Ricard next in two weeks. So, if we look at the calendar, nothing really happening, to be honest. We've got an upgrade arriving on that Saturday for the underfloor. A shame I can't really fast track it any quicker than what it already is. So, we're just going to have to accept it. I think if I quickly have a look, I don't think uh, we're going to get the option to fast track it. If I take an engineer off here and put it onto the other one. I don't know if it's going to make a difference. Uh, if it arrives on that Friday, we could do an emergency manufacture. To be fair, this could actually work out. Let's leave it like that and we'll find out in the next episode if it arrives or not. And as you know, we have to renegotiate Alonso's contract and Martin Werner, one of the staff members. We're currently saving up some cash and around the halfway stage of the season for the season break, we'll start to go into negotiations. So right now, we're just focused on saving cash and uh, getting ready for those negotiations. But guys, leave a like, subscribe for more. What a result. Happy, happy days. And we go to the next one with momentum on our side. As always, a massive shout out to the members. Check out the two videos on screen if you haven't seen them already, guys. And yeah, we're cooking in this series. Hopefully you enjoy. Hopefully you stick around. And I'll see you guys in the next one at Paul Ricard. Until then, take care. And let's goodbye from me.